Okay, this topic is talking about transforming exponential functions. We have our base exponential function y equals a times b to the x power, but what happens if we play around with these numbers or if we add or subtract numbers in the exponent or add or subtract a number from the end? So before we get into the rules, let's take a look at the graph. I'm gonna go ahead and write y equals, and we're gonna just keep two as your base for now. So we'll say two to the x power. Remember that's an exponential growth. So let's talk about first what happens if I make that number out at the front. Negative. So if I throw a negative out front, I don't want to raise the negative, so I'm going to put that outside parentheses. That's going to take this graph and flip it over the x-axis. It's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. It's not going to really change the shape of the graph. It's just going to be going downward instead of up. Let's say I make the number in front of two something other than one. So if it's one, that a value would be one. But like, let's say it's two or three. Remember that leading number is your y-intercept. But what it's doing is it's making that graph go higher and higher. It's stretching it out in the vertical direction. And if I make that number negative two or negative three, negative four, negative five, it's gonna stretch it out vertically as well, just being flipped. So anything above negative, uh, anything above one, so like if it's one, it's not gonna change, but two, three, four, or anything below negative one is going to stretch that graph vertically. What about numbers that are between negative one and one? So let's say I do 0 0.5 or 0 0.43. Notice that that gets flatter, okay? That actually is gonna compress the graph, a compression. So 0 0.001, really flat, all right? So that's a vertical compression. And it doesn't matter if that's a negative or positive. So if it's negative, it's still gonna be flatter. If I take away one of those zeros, it's less flat, but it's still compressed, okay? So if it's negative one, it's not compressed, but negative 0.1 is going to be compressed. So that's what happens with the number out front. Now let's talk about what happens in the exponent. So if I raise that to x, let's say minus two, oops, let's put that in parentheses. So parentheses x minus two. Notice that that graph moved a little bit. And if I did x minus three, it moved even more. What direction is it going? Well, it's bringing that to the right. So if it's x minus zero, it's not going right at all. So it's gonna stay the same, x minus one, right one, x minus two, right two, three, right three. So that would mean that if I added one, it's gonna go in the opposite direction. It's gonna go left one, left two, left three, left four, left five. So it's actually gonna have the opposite effect on the x-axis. And this rule applies for any functions. It's gonna be, if, it, if you want it to go right, you wanna subtract a number. And if you want it to go left, you wanna add a number. Now let's talk about the end number. So if I want this to go up, I wanna maybe add a number to the end. So that's gonna shift it up three. If I want it to go down, I might say minus three. If I want it to go up four, plus four. If I want it to go down four, minus four. If I want to get real fancy, I could say y equals a parentheses two raised to the parentheses x minus h plus k. That's the formula we'll use. Add some sliders. And let's make that h value zero. and the k value is zero. Notice that's the same graph. The a value is one. That's the same thing as this being one. So if a is one, that's not gonna change it. But if I increase a, that does stretch it out. If I make it between zero and one, it's gonna compress it. Between zero and negative one compresses it. Anything below negative one is gonna stretch it out again. 
Negative one, just the negative reflects, but it doesn't have any bearing on whether it stretches or compresses. The a value, the h value will, you know, because that formula had a minus in there. So if I'm subtracting a number, it's going to take it right. And if that's minusing a negative or adding a number, it's going to take it left. And then the k value will shift it up if I'm adding or down if I'm subtracting. So these rules can be summarized the following ways. And you might want to write these down. If a is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, the graph is going to stretch vertically. In other words, it's going to get taller. If it's between negative 1 and 1, not including 0, because 0 is going to make it nothing, then the graph is going to compress vertically. So it's going to get shorter. And if A is negative, the graph will be reflected over the x-axis. It'll flip. In the exponent, if a number is subtracted from x, it's going to go that many units to the right. So if I have x minus 5, it'll go 5 units to the right. If a number is added to x, it's going to go that many units to the left. So if it's x plus 5, it'll be left 5. And then finally, uh, talking about the number at the end, if a number is added at the end, it's going to go that many units up. That's that k value. And if it's subtracted from the end, it's going to go that many units down. So those are the, the general rules. Now I have two problems. I'll work out, or three problems. I'll work out two of them with you and have you try one on your own. And verify this on Desmos if you'd like. Um, so question example one. It says, describe the transformations that shift the parent function y equals 1 half to the x power to the new function. And there's three new functions listed. So let's first talk about uh, what we have outside of the 1 half. The 1 half is the base. That's going to be the same. The number, that a value, is going to be negative 2. So since it's negative, that negative is going to mean it's going to be reflected over the x-axis. But because it's not just negative, it's also a number that 2, because that number is less than negative 1, or if, if you just look at the 2 that's greater than 1, that's going to be stretched vertically. And the exponent, I'm adding 1. So that's going to have the opposite effect of what the axis will tell you. So that's actually going to be left, and that's going to be left one unit. Left one. And the number being subtracted at the end is going to imply that it's going to go down. So that's going to be down four. And I'll verify this on a graph. I'll do one operation at a time. So let me clear all this out. Let me just start with y equals parentheses 1 half raised to the x power. We'll start with that. That's an exponential decay because it is going down as it goes to the right. If I do y equals negative 2 parentheses 1 half raised to the x power, the negative is going to reflect it. It's going to be flipped over the x-axis. And the, the graph is a little bit steeper, so that 2 is going to stretch it out. In the exponent, we had a number being added. So if I add 1, it might be a little hard to tell here because it's only one unit. But if I take that 1 away, you see how it moved a little bit to the left. So it went left just one unit, because that's plus 1. And at the end, the minus 4 shifted it down 4. So that's the final out. out. It's kind of hard to tell when it's all put together. But if you do each thing separately, you might be able to tell what the movements are on the graph. Notice that it flat lines at negative 4. So that horizontal asymptote will be y equals negative 4 as opposed to y equals 0. You want to try this one here. If not, if you want to have one more with me working it out, you can try this last one. So pause it if you're ready to try this one on your own. Otherwise, you can see this one together. Um, and this one, negative 2 thirds, that number is, it's not negative, but sorry, it's positive 2 thirds. So it's not going to be reflected. But because 2 thirds is less than 1, 
and it's between zero and one more specifically, that's gonna be compressed vertically. So the one half is the base, that doesn't change. The exponent doesn't have anything added or subtracting. So it's not gonna go left or right. The plus three means it's gonna go up three. So this only has two movements. It compresses vertically and it goes up three units. Try number three. Pause the video if you need to, so that way you can try it on your own and give yourself time to work it out and you can check it after you unpause it. All right, the negative is gonna mean that it's gonna be reflected over the x-axis. And the minus seven is gonna mean, in the exponent is gonna mean it's gonna go to the right seven units. Because there's no number added at the end, it's not going to go up or down. So it's just gonna be reflected over the x-axis and write seven units. Now those aren't all the, all the movements that a graph can make. You know, there, there are other reflections and other compressions. These are just the basic ones. But let me just show you without being formal about it. If you made the x in the exponent negative, it will reflect it but it doesn't reflect it over the, y, the x axis, it reflects it over the y axis. So you notice that it moved over here. And also no, notice how that turned that decay from decay to a growth, because remember that negative will flip this. So that's really the same as two to the x power. Um, you can also compress it and stretch it vertically if we throw numbers with the x. So like if that were five x, that's gonna um, compress it um, not vertically, but horizontally, because it's gonna get closer to the y-axis. And if that were 0.5x, that would be stretched horizontally. Um, so I didn't write those down in the rules, but those are different rules, uh, movements that you can make. All right, uh, so th that'll help you on this topic. If you have any questions, let me know.